there were three units that were utilized throughout the course of this experiment. Volume, mass, and time. Volume was measured in milliliters of oxygen. Mass was measured in grams. And time was measured in hours. Together, we will use these three units of measurement as a representation of our metabolic rate, that is, milliliters of oxygen consumed for every gram hour. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to calculate the metabolic rate of an organism in milliliters of oxygen per gram hour. First and foremost, what you will need to make a note of is that milliliters of oxygen per gram hour is the same thing as milliliters of oxygen divided by grams divided by hours or milliliters of oxygen divided by hours divided by grams. Now let's try an example. Suppose that I observed a mouse that inhaled one milliliter of oxygen. Suppose that this mouse had a mass of 20 grams. And for this example, let's assume that the time it took this mouse to inhale this one milliliter of oxygen was 90 seconds. Note that the volume and mass that we've currently recorded are already in the correct units. Recall we're trying to attain milliliters of oxygen per gram hour. So milliliters and grams are the correct units, but we need to first convert the seconds to hours. So there are a couple rules that you must keep in mind. In regards to time, if you initially observe the time in seconds, then you're going to need to divide that number by 3,600 to give you the equivalent number of hours. If you observe the time in minutes initially, then you're going to need to divide that number by 60 to give you the equivalent number of hours. In our example problem, we observed a 20 gram mouse inhale one milliliter of oxygen over a time period of 90 seconds. However, before we can obtain our final units of milliliters per, per gram hour, we first must convert 90 seconds to hours. To do this, we're going to need to recall first and foremost that one minute equals 60 seconds and that one hour equals 60 minutes. Using these two formulas, we can then correlate seconds to hours. If we know that there are 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds for every one of those minutes, then one hour actually equals 60 times 60, which gives us 3,600. So one hour equals 3,600 seconds. Furthermore, one minute equaling 60 seconds means that every second technically equals 1 60th of a minute. 60 minutes equaling one hour means that one minute equals 1 60th of an hour. We can then use this information to further correlate seconds to hours, denoting that one second will equal 1 over 3,600 hours. So because we now know that this equals 1 second 
and we have 90 seconds initially in our example, we can now take those 90 seconds and multiply them by 1 over 3,600. This gives us 90 over 3,600 hours. We can simplify this fraction. So 90 over 3,600, and each of those numbers is divisible by 10, so we divide by 10 over 10, which is equal to 1, and that gives us 9 over 360. Now, 9 also goes into each of these numbers, so we're now going to actually divide by 9 over 9, and that's going to give us 1 over 40. So 90 seconds is equal to 1 40th of an hour. I would also like to show you that we still get this answer even if we do this in a step-by-step -step fashion. That is, converting seconds first to minutes, and then after that, converting the minutes to hours. So again, recall that one minute equals 60 seconds. which means that one second is one sixtieth of a minute, and we've got 90 seconds. So if we multiply 90 by one sixtieth, we get 90 over 60 minutes. We can then simplify this by dividing it by 10 over 10, which then gives us 9 over 6. Okay. We can then simplify that farther by dividing by 3 over 3, which gives us 3 over 2, or 3 halves. So 3 halves of a minute, which is the same as 1.5 minutes, but we're going to leave it in fraction form. Recall again that 1 minute equals a 60th of an hour. So we're going to take 3 halves and we're going to multiply it by 1 60th. When we do that, we should get 3 divided by 2 divided by 60. Now because 2 is on the denominator of the first fraction and 60 is on the denominator of the second fraction, we can actually multiply that 2 and that 60 by each other to give us 3 over 2 times 60, which gives us 3 over 120. So, 3 over 120, which we can further simplify because 3 and 120 are both divisible by 3. So if we take 3 over 120 and divide both of them by 3, so 3 over 3, it should give us 1 over 40 hours, which again gives us 1 40th of an hour. So we're finally ready to calculate our units in milliliters of oxygen per gram hour. Recall that we can write this in a variety of ways. For ease of use, we're going to do milliliters of oxygen divided by hours divided by grams. Recall that we started with one milliliter of oxygen, and we now have calculated our 90 seconds to be equal to 1 40th of an hour. So we have 1 divided by 1 over 40. Remember, any time that you divide by a fraction, you always multiply by the reciprocal. So because we had 1 divided by 1 over 40, we now have 1 times 40 over 1 when we multiply by the reciprocal. This will now give us 40 milliliters of oxygen per hour. We can now take this number and divide it by the number of grams. So we have 40 milliliters of oxygen per hour, and we're going to divide that by 20 grams. So again, because the hours and the grams are both denominators, we can multiply them by each other. So we'll now have 40 milliliters of oxygen divided by 20 grams times one hour. We can then Simplify this so it now reads as 40 milliliters of oxygen per 20 gram hours. 
So we have 40 divided by 20, which we can further simplify simply to 2. So your final answer for the metabolic rate of the mouse is 2 milliliters of oxygen per gram hour.